Hello. The nice people at Runcam sent me these Runcam 3 camera accessories to take a look at. These are not really the kind of thing I would normally be looking at on my channel, and I wasn't expecting to get them actually. They, they just sort of sent them to me without really uh, saying much about it first. Um, but I thought I would take a look at them quickly just since, since I have them already, and I don't think I've seen any other reviews looking at them. I'm not going to review them in depth too much, but one of them here actually could be a little bit quadcopter or multi-rotor related because it is sort of feasible to use this one on a quadcopter and I'm thinking I might actually try that so maybe we will we will be able to mix in a little bit of uh, mini quad or something in this video at some point as well so let's start with this one on the left this is basically just the equivalent of the GoPro mount that's been around for quite a while basically the same except that I found that I could not fit the Runcam 3 into the GoPro one that was really tough However, I can fairly easily fit the GoPro into the Runcam one. Um, although I should mention I have on the bottom of my GoPro a little bit of Velcro tape. This is the fluffy side. And this allows it to fit in there pretty well, pretty nice and snug. So that can use the GoPro as well. Yeah, it's a little bit too snug actually with that Velcro. Might might not even need it. Because when you try that with the Runcam, it just slots in and out much quicker and easier um, so yeah fits in there <clears throat> perfectly well and slides out nice and easy so it's easy to get this out and switch it around speaking of switch it around the mounts for all this stuff seems to be a perfect clone of the GoPro stuff almost perfect so each each of these two accessories each of these two comes with two of these mounts one is a flat bottomed mount and the other one has a slight bit of curvature to it for mounting on a helmet or maybe on somewhere on your car you could probably use that sort of little bit of curvature as well and the only difference I can see in these mounts and the GoPro one which is this one over here is that the GoPro one has <coughs> excuse me has the um, tape already stuck on it oh and there's also a little bit of difference there with the uh, the run cam one over here you can see there's a bit of a see-through part there it's molded slightly different but apart from that they seem to be exactly identical you can use the GoPro mount on these and use the run cam one on the GoPro and everything like that so that's that's kind of nice if you already have this kind of thing mounted on your car or your helmet or your motorbike or whatever there you go you can use the um, run cam stuff just as easily from point of view of Mounting on a, on a quadcopter, you might be interested to see this. This is the maximum up tilt you can give it. Looks like about 40 degrees. It's not quite 45. That would be 45, wouldn't it? That's so about 40 degrees, and you can also tilt it down. Not that you'd want to, but, um, well, you might, I suppose. If you had this on a large quad, and you were doing stuff like, like I sometimes do, flying around slowly, looking, trying to look down at what you're doing, looking at for your aerial videography, you might want to point it down as well and then that tightens up quite nice and snug and the whole thing when it's stuck into its mount is very very nice and solid so yeah I'm gonna I think I will try this on my mini quad later on it's just a matter of how well or how much you trust this sticky tape I suppose an important point that you might be thinking about when you're considering mounting this on your multi-rotor or your model aircraft is the weight and it's about 40 grams with one of these I suppose you need that too don't you that one Ooh, gee. Is that four grams? Oh, that's a heavy little bit of foam, foam tape there. Anyway, so about 43 grams. So when you have a mini quad that weighs, say, probably under 400 grams with no battery on, this is starting to get to a fairly considerable portion of the total weight. With the camera, that's uh, about 110 grams all up. Um, well, I have the scales here. Let's just see what this one weighs. Just for the sake of it, I don't think you're going to be putting this on your mini quad and flying it in the rain. Same kind of mount at the bottom, and then we have this nice, quite a nice locking mechanism here. It's actually locked, so you can't accidentally pop it open. You have to actually hold that spring-loaded um, tab piece there and uh, do it carefully like that. And then it opens up the back quite nicely. And it's interesting that this white, the rubber seal there, silicone seal or whatever it is, it's not flat up against the rim. It's sort of on a slope. If 
you see what I mean there? It sort of slopes, slopes it in at an angle. I haven't seen that before. Is that how they do these now? Last time I had a waterproof camera case, it was sort of, it was just sort of sitting flat in the in the inset piece there. Um, anyways, yeah. So you got a button to push on the top, button to push the Wi-Fi button on the back. Uh, it comes with a nice little protective seal on the front and also one on the back actually which is a little bit strange doesn't really seem necessary um, and when you put the camera in there it sits in there nice and um, <clears throat> very nice and firm no jiggling around there's a piece of foam on the back there which sort of presses the front of the camera well presses it you know front to back so that it can't jiggle around um, you don't get much audio from this of course you can hear a quite loud audio from the case being handled and sort of rubbing it and scraping around like that but any audio that's outside uh, coming in from you know just outside audio is not is not going to be very loud at all but anyway I'll see if I can think of something to do with this um, in a watery situation and we'll be able to listen to the audio in that situation as well here are the product pages for these two items. That one's only $7, and the waterproof case is only $13, which is quite surprising to me. I thought this stuff cost quite a bit more than that. Uh, mind you, I haven't been buying any waterproof cases recently, which sort of reminds me of a funny story. Well, it wasn't very funny for me, but um, way back in 2003, 2004, somewhere around there, I had one of these Casio cameras, just a point-and-shoot digital camera, and I got it into my head that I wanted to have a waterproof case for it for some reason. So I paid an embarrassingly large amount of money for, I think it was that one there, just over $200 if I remember correctly. This was back back when GoPros weren't really a thing and all this stuff was quite expensive. Um, but what's even more embarrassing is that I never actually used the thing. <laughs> so I ended up just putting it onto an online auction site as a $1 reserve and I managed to sell it for <clears throat> $1. Um, but wait, it gets worse. The guy never even paid me for it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, silly, silly, silly. Here's what it would look like with this frame mount on the quadcopter. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it would be my first choice. It sort of raises the center of gravity up quite a lot, and it brings the center of mass that way as well. Um, yeah, it would, definitely wouldn't be my first choice. So if we compare that with what we have here, this is what I normally do, just this block of foam here and a velcro strap so it's a lot lighter and you can keep the mass of the camera more to the front and much lower down but it sort of means that you need to have one of these nice carbon fiber plates to be able to do that so if I didn't have one of these carbon fiber plates I think it would be alright to to use one of these mounts on the mini quad um, anyway I'll give this a go and see how see how it turns out so for this flight I was mainly interested to see if there was any extra bounce when you finish a sharp roll movement like a roll side to side flip or something um, there, I think there might be a tiny little bit, but it's quite hard to tell. Um, and I was also sort of interested to see if there might have been any extra jello induced by this mount being quite rigid as opposed to my normal mounting method which has a little bit of flex in it. But I didn't really notice a whole lot of extra jello either. Again, maybe just a tiny little bit of extra jello, but it's also hard to tell about that as well. As for the extra weight, I think that was also very slightly noticeable. Uh, you just needed a little bit more throttle and it was a bit trickier to get through the tight spaces as precisely as you might have been if the quad was lighter. Overall, it was really difficult to tell any difference in flight characteristics with this mount. So I think it's a perfectly viable alternative if you don't have any other way to do it. So here's the result of that crash. The mount itself has stayed on there pretty good. I don't think it's even, yeah, it didn't even like bend down on its um, rotating bolt there. As far as I can tell, it's in the same angle. But the camera has slipped out of the back of the case a little bit. So it um, could probably use a little bit larger lip on the inside of this area here, I think. But then again, at this mount probably, <laughs> You're not supposed to be doing this kind of thing with it. I just thought I'd um, test it. Well, I wasn't intending to crash. I actually disarmed and then thought I'd do one more flip, which actually um, makes the prop stop completely, and then I can't rearm it. So unfortunately, that was um, not intentional, but I guess it gives us a chance to look at what would happen when that 
sort of situation happens. Um, and it's sort of uh, soft earth that it landed in. It was raining yesterday, so it wasn't hard ground or anything. Um, <clears throat> yeah, anyway, that's, that's what you can expect from this. Okay, well that was an embarrassing fail. You see what happened there? Just something interesting I noticed while I was editing this. It looks like they're doing much, much better audio processing in the Runcam 3 than in the Runcam 2 because when the wiper hit the camera case just here, you can see this little blip is where the hit actually happens. And immediately after that, the volume is adjusted very quickly to be um, much lower and then after a moment it comes back to whatever the current audio level is um, so it means that overall you're getting a much better sound uh, level for the current situation I think this is what the GoPro does as well so I was really pleased to see this in the Runcam 3 I'll play this a few more times so you can hopefully see what I mean Okay, so I've moved the mount up to the top here on the body of the car instead of the windscreen. Unfortunately, my wiper comes right up to the top of the window there, so uh, I'll just put it up here instead. And you kind of have to ruin the stickiness of that piece to get it off. So I'm using now one of the mounts, the sticky mounts that came with the GoPro. And I said before that they were a perfect match, but I'm starting to think it's not quite the case because it fits in there pretty well, but there's a fair bit of play that wasn't obvious when I was looking at it before. So it'll still work quite well, but what I'm going to do is put a piece of this Velcro underneath uh, on the bottom of the piece that's on the camera so that it'll slip in there and hold in a little bit tighter. After mounting the camera in a more sensible place, the rest of the test went perfectly well. I realise this is not really a, a hardcore underwater environment, but um, that's all I'm going to do for this test. Maybe in the future I can use it for something else a little bit more aqua sports related or something like that. Anyway, until then, thanks for watching. <laughs>